Hi, in this video I'm going to quickly demonstrate uh, how to use uh, SQL Server file table feature along with full text search to uh, search and analyze uh, documents such as Word documents or uh, PDF documents. This video is actually just uh, a compilation of some of the content that I've recently published on my blog and website and is more of a continuation on uh, the, the video that I posted previously about how SQL Server can actually handle uh, the variety aspect or the variety uh, V in big data and work with unstructured data as well. So uh, for those who are looking for the content or basically the scripts on how to go about doing this, I've actually published all of that on my website here. So you can go to www.google.com and uh, you can just search for enabled business and you can see here the very first link that says enabled business solutions, that's me. So you can click on that click on the first link there and you'll see there's an option here called blog so you need to go ahead and click that and when you do you'll see two uh, actually there <laughs> the other videos are somewhere uh, further back but if you go ahead and look here the one that says loading resumes yeah you can see here loading resumes and searching them using SQL Server and then loading resumes and searching them using SQL Server part 2 so these are the two scripts that uh, uh, the two places where you'll find most of the data. Now, uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to delete or drop everything that I've already done so that I can show everything in one shot. So, here we go. The first thing is I'm going to create a database called Resume DB. So that'd be like this: create resume. Oh sorry, create database Resume DB. And now that we have that. I'm going to implement the file table feature inside of this. In order to do this, the first thing you need to do is you need to enable the uh, file stream within the SQL Server Configuration Manager. So you'll go to Start Program Files Microsoft SQL Server 2014 and in there you'll find the SQL Server Configuration Manager which looks like this. In here you'll find SQL Server Services and then if you see your Microsoft SQL Server and when you open that up you'll have File Stream and you need to check all of these boxes here and give a name for the file share. So as you can see here we go ahead and check all of this and then we press OK. Great. And you'll need to restart SQL Server Service. Right, so as you can see here we've got uh, the database uh, created now. So uh, I've got my resume DB over here. And uh, the first thing is to come over here and you can see we've got loading resume uh, and searching them. So I'm using these uh, blog links in here demonstrate uh, the steps here so you can see this is the first step that we did let me just go ahead and allow the plugin over here and then we need to go ahead and configure uh, file stream for uh, uh, access level 2 so we can just copy paste that over here there is a problem with the blog where the second single quote gets kind of uh, put in a different format so you can just replace that and you can see here we've just configured file stream for access level 2 uh, the next step is to alter the database and add a file group. Now the uh, intention here is we need a file stream file group so it says contains file stream. So we go ahead and do that as well. And the next step is to create a file or a folder actually in this case it's not really a file it's a folder. So uh, what we'll do here is I'll actually uh, there's a problem with the blog where backslashes are not represented properly and the blog doesn't go through so in that case I've just represented with a word here you'll go ahead and choose a file folder where uh, you want to go ahead and store your uh, var binary files typically the best location to do this would be on a very fast disk array because you're dealing with very large files and uh, as a result you need to go ahead and size the uh, disk appropriately in this case I'll just call it SQL data and uh, um, let me see if I can give it another folder name. Say, uh, I'll just call this file stream. I'll create a new folder called file stream on my C drive, and uh, I'll put these files over there so that I can do uh, the cleanup later. So it'll be C colon file stream. You can see here it says uh, cannot create the file because it already exists. So I'll just call the C colon slash data slash file stream. There we go. So now that we have this uh, file group created, the next step is to actually uh, 
enable the non-transacted access on the file stream directory. Now the reason I'm enabling non-transacted access is because I don't want to write insert update delete statements to populate this folder with some resumes. So uh, I'm just going to use the Windows Explorer to do that. So that will be possible now that I've got non-transacted access full. So again you'll see I'm altering the database resume DB and setting file stream to non-transacted access. And I'll say yes. Great. Once this is done, the database is prepped for uh, the file stream. So the next step is to actually create the table. So you'll see that I've got the script for that over here. So if I just click copy code and uh, paste that over here, and then I've got a database called profile resumes, which is using the directory called profile. Uh, again, here there's a limitation in the blog where underscores cause a problem. So I've replaced it with um, database underscore default over here. So once I've done this, uh, Oh yeah, it's called file stream. So file stream. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm in the wrong database. My mistake. So uh, I'll come into the um, resume DB folder over here, and then the file stream directory. And you can see I've got file stream here. So at this point, we've basically got the uh, the file stream part of it up and running. So if I just refresh this, uh, uh, we should see. Uh, file tables here. So if I right click this and choose explore file table property you'll see that uh, a Windows Explorer opens up here and inside this Windows Explorer you'll see that uh, basically I can copy paste files. So the next step is to dump some files in here so let me just go ahead and search for a few PDF documents that I can upload. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy some files over here now. So let me just go ahead and uh, paste that in. So you'll see I've got some like training content stuff going on over here, some typical stuff that I've got here. So once I've done this, basically, I can just come here and do select star from uh, profile resumes. And you'll see that I've actually got these documents inserted here. So if I come over here and say uh, explore the file table, and uh, say I remove one of these files here. I just click and delete it. And if I do execute star, you'll see that now I've got just three documents. So this makes management of uh, very large documents a lot easier, especially for uh, image catalogs, uh, file resumes, document search, things like that. And that's one of the big advantages of having file table and file stream uh, within SQL Server. So at this point we've got our database up and running and we've got some documents in the database. So the next step is to go ahead and do a full text index on this. In order to do this, the remaining instructions that uh, you need to follow are available on this link here. So you'll see that loading resume searching for them using SQL Server 2014. So if I click on that, uh, you'll see the instructions for that. The first thing is obviously to check whether you have the appropriate filters installed. So if I come over here and just do select star from sys.fulltext document types, you'll see the different types of files that SQL Server is capable of searching. And uh, in my case, you'll see that I've already installed the Adobe filter for uh, PDF, as well as uh, doc, .docx and .doc extensions that come by default with uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Now, the, uh, the Microsoft SQL Server uh, uh, I filters for documents and Word documents and things like the Excel sheets come by default inbuilt with SQL Server but the one for the PDF doesn't so what you need to do for the PDF documents is you need to come to this link here which is the FTP site on Adobe and uh, when you click on this it's going to open up the Adobe uh, 9 version of the iFilter. There are known compatibility issues with the Adobe 11 so I'm not using that. Instead I'm using the Adobe 9. You'll need to download this file. It's called uh, PDF iFilter 64 and uh, install it on your system. Now that's not enough. Once you've done that the next step is to actually make a change to the environment variables on your system. This is actually a bug within SQL Server where uh, SQL Server doesn't identify the path correctly. So what you need to do after you've downloaded and installed this is uh, you need to come into the environment variables of your system. So I've mentioned that here in the blog as well. So let me just go ahead and uh, come back here. So once you've downloaded it, you'll see that uh, the next most important step is this one here. 
uh, you'll get these error messages if uh, you've not installed and configured this properly uh, the interesting thing is that this is the error that's actually the most significant one and if you google this you'll get like about eight links that's it so there's not a lot of documentation regarding this which is one of the reasons why I'm creating this video now here what you need to do is basically uh, you need to open up uh, in fact I've already done it so I'll just go ahead and open up my computer so I'll open up my computer go to the properties once I come into properties over here you see advanced systems you click on that and then you click environment variables and under environment variables you'll see system variables and if you scroll down further you'll see path click on that click edit and if you see here I've actually typed in the path for where Adobe has installed that uh, iFilter so you'll see C colon program files Adobe Adobe PDF iFilter 9 uh, for 64-bit platforms and then the bin folder and you need to stop there don't forget to put the last backslash over there so uh, I press OK I press OK and that's really the, uh, the the most important step in terms of configuring the iFilter because if you don't do that SQL Server is not able to identify the path of the iFilter and as a result the full text search doesn't display any PDF documents in the results uh, once you've done this the next step is to restart SQL Server services It'll, along with the full text search so you'll see here I've selected full text search over here so that will be uh, basically just services.msc and you'll come in over here and you'll search for full text search right click and restart Yeah. after restarting it the next step is to run these commands so if you see here I'll just go ahead and select this and uh, I'll run it on my uh, SQL Server so just a second let me just go ahead and change the um, change the script here I think I copy pasted it wrong hosts so let me just go ahead and do that and uh, once you've selected all that you select it and execute it now once you've done that uh, basically it's good to go because uh, now SQL Server should be able to recognize the iFilter that you've loaded for reading Adobe documents as well and uh, if you've done with that that's pretty much the last step as you can see here so the next step is to create a full text index uh, in order to do that uh, all you really need to do is right click the uh, file table full text search define a full text index basically press next it'll pick up the primary key you press next choose file stream as the column that you want to read and then the file type as the name or the extension of the file that you're trying to read so that SQL Server knows that it's trying to read a word document or uh, any other type of document now the Adobe I filters that we have here are only for the big five languages so you have English Japanese uh, Spanish etc so uh, these documents are basically English so I'm gonna select English over here and uh, I could probably even search for the name of the document so I'll select that as well press next I'll do the automatic uh, tracking of changes and I'll give this a new name like PDF doc search it doesn't really matter because I'm going to delete this anyway at the end of the video so I'll press next and uh, then the schedule of course and then we press finish and at this point SQL Server is now reading the document so you can see here it's saying stop full text population basically once it's done I'll apply the changes that have been identified and after that I should be able to start searching for the documents using keywords so you can see here it says apply track changes I've done that so you should get this pop up here and once I've done that I can simply come here and say select star from the table where contains and I'm gonna say the full text column which is the file stream column basically over here contains the word uh, Azure and let's see uh, what comes up okay so you can see both of these guys have Azure in them so how about I just search 2014 well in that case all of them show up so how about performance great so as you can see here we're now able to search for the PDF documents no problems there it's pretty fast as well so uh, you'll actually have the advantage of actually being able to scroll through or search a lot of documents 
I'm doing this right now for a company that's actually a job portal and uh, they're uh, interested in keeping track of resumes and identifying uh, the most relevant resumes which again has a lot of SQL Server full text search going on with weightages and things like that but uh, I hope this video has been useful there's obviously a lot of applications for this everything from searching for phone bills uh, that you have on your file system to uh, document repositories within your organization or maybe HR searching for resumes during the interview process so uh, it's all up to you in terms of how you actually implement it but I hope uh, you've had fun watching this video and uh, thank you for watching